Hi there, my name is Ken C. Dodds and I'm going to show you how to create a bite-sized five-minute lesson. So I'm using QuickTime to do this. This is kind of weird for me. Hopefully this works out uh, because I actually use ScreenFlow to do my actual lessons. So uh, just to show a couple of things, we're going to go to my AMA um, because in here I answered a question for you um, that shows all the hardware and software that I use to record my Egghead lessons, these bite-sized videos. So I have a special microphone and a boom for it. And then I um, hook that into, um, oh yeah, I have my, my cable and that cable hooks into the preamp, which is this thing here. Um, and then that goes into my interface, which is this thing here, which then connects via USB to my computer. Then I use ScreenFlow to record stuff. Some people use uh, Adobe Premiere. Uh, ScreenFlow is really great. I also use Bartender, that's this thing here. But uh, with the latest version of um, OS X or El Capitan, you can actually go to your uh, system preferences and automatically hide and show the menu bar. The reason that you do this is because the whole goal uh, is to remove as many uh, distractions as possible. So then you also want to um, hide your uh, bar here and so then everything is just totally gone. Uh, for the lesson that I'm going to uh, show you how to do today, we're actually going to be able to uh, just do, use uh, full screen. And so we don't need to really worry about being able to hide these things. But uh, Bartender is great if you don't have these features um, for that. And then RDM is a, sets the ability to um, record the screen resolution at 720p, which is perfect. And so I'm using that right now. Um, I set it to 1280 by 720 high DPI, which means that um, when I actually export it, I'm going to want to um, cut it down in half because this is using high DPI. So it's going to be twice the size. I'll, I'll cut it down to half, but it'll look really nice and crisp. Um, and so this is the setup. These knobs, it's nothing magical. Uh, well, it is magical. It's totally magical. I have no idea what these things do, but somebody showed me a picture of theirs. And so this looks kind of like that. Um, and it all just kind of works out. Then there's this blog post that I recommend you check out. Um, I'm recording a great screencast that uh, shows a lot of uh, really good tips that I'm going to be demonstrating today. So that is that. So when I want to create a lesson, um, then I generally like what we're going to do is I, I just kind of decide what I want to record on and then I go learn about that thing, make sure that I understand it well. So you generally want to teach something that you already know but it's always good to research it as well. So we'll say array map MDN. Uh, so I'm going to go to the array, array prototype dot map API. And I see there are a couple of things that I'll be teaching. So first off, it comes off of the array prototype. And so I'll, I'll have an array and I'll call the map function that accepts a callback and optionally uh, this argument. And so um, I'll want to uh, talk about the parameters that the callback accepts, the current value index and array. And then uh, the optional this arg, um, which uh, defaults to the window object. So we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, probably, I can't really think of any actual practical use cases, but practical use cases are really helpful if you can come up with them. And so it can be good in uh, this kind of scenario where I have this really great resource to look at some of the examples that they have. And so here's um, one to square root numbers, uh, which is pretty handy. Um, this I would probably actually not do what they're trying to do here this way. I would actually rather do it with a reduce. So that's kind of weird. Um, oh, I see what they're doing. Yeah, still kind of weird. Um, and then um, double, uh, this is probably the example that I'm going to use to demonstrate this. Um, and then I might also use pluck. There are some other kind of useful use cases for this, but we're not really going to uh, look into those interesting use cases. So great. Um, that's everything that I need from there. Now, um, you want to make the output code as accessible as possible. So you want people to be able to um, play around with what you've created and, and make uh, changes and, and just muck around with it. And so putting your code up on GitHub is really good. But even better than that is to use something like JSBin. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, this makes it so anybody, like if I, I'll just go ahead and save this now. I get this URL 
and anybody can go to it no matter who they are, where they are, and they can see um, this JSBin. So I can say hello and save that. And then if I, oh, I didn't even need to refresh it. It's like live streaming, which is kind of cool. But after the fact, when people go in and, and look at the, the output code that I provide for them, they can go and, and mess around with things and, and see how things work. So that is useful. If you can't do it in a JS bin because it's more than just browser, like you're teaching a node side thing or, or like some server side thing, then um, a GitHub repo is really useful as well. You just want to make it as accessible as possible to the people that uh, you're delivering to. Um, so yeah, then I go in and we'll go ahead and close this. Um, another thing that we want to make sure that we do is remove distraction, like I talked about before, and because this is a JS bin, I can full screen this, and then I can actually even more full screen. Um, let's see, there's a high toolbar in full screen. There we go. And so now there are even fewer distractions. And in JS bin, there's actually also a hot uh, or a shortcut. It's a command backslash. I think control backslash works as well. Um, and that hides that. And so there are very few distractions. Now there's one thing um, more that we want to do. There's a lot of white space here. And so we're going to go to our account, go to editor settings, and we're gonna bump the font size big time. So this will be like 24. And now everything's gonna look ridiculously huge and that's actually good. So um, we'll get rid of CSS. We don't need that, we don't need output. Uh, we do want the console. So now we're going to set up our document uh, for recording the lesson, and then we'll actually build out what we're working toward um, so that we kind of practice it and, and also know what we're actually working uh, to like write out. And uh, then we'll pull pieces away when we're actually ready to record and then build back up to the pieces that we're actually trying to teach. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next, but I'm gonna pause this really quick.